All right, I'm coming to you from Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym with my favorite workout of the week. That's lower body legs has always been my favorite. It's always, in my opinion, been the most rewarding. And a lot of us, for some reason, want to neglect legs when you know it, it sets off a hormone response in the body. It requires our entire body to have to engage. We have to create tension in the whole body while we're going through movements like squatting or lunging or split squatting. So. Uh, I know that every movement isn't for everyone, so I'm gonna take you through a workout today. We're gonna to train intensely, but we're also gonna show you some variations and we're gonna talk about things that um, I would ne not necessarily say you have to regress from, but we like to refer to more as a lateralization. So maybe if you're not fit to do a regular back squat, maybe something like a safety bar squat or a front squat might be suitable for you. Let's get inside, let's get those legs working, let's have some fun today, come on. Let's start with hamstring. All right, so we're about to start with my favorite body, body part, which is legs. I've been starting a lot with um, hamstring curls. I feel like as I'm able to get that hamstring to engage, it forces the quad and the hip flexor to relax a bunch. So um, by the time I get into my squat or a squat variation, I'm really able to um, get into position a lot quicker. So right now we're just gonna start with a really lightweight. Now, now with hamstring curls, we'll typically do seated or uh, lying variation. So we're gonna go through pretty much two warm-up sets, four hard working sets, and then we're gonna move on to the safety squat today. All right, so by about now, I'm gonna jump up to a, a heavier set. We're gonna hold it for just about four sets of eight. Now the idea here is not to start swinging and allowing extension in your lower back. I'm really trying to isolate by just doing flexion and extension out of the knee. I'm trying to feel like I'm pulling from the hamstrings the entire time, nothing fancy here. But uh, ever since I've been doing this first, my body's just getting warm so much quicker. We're gonna see today too. Is Tone gonna to talk? I bet he doesn't say a word to me today. Yeah, 180. That felt light. That felt good. Now right now I'm training lower body once a week. I've trained lower body every day. I've trained lower body twice a week, three times a week. Um, you gotta start manipulating volume and intensity to, according to how much you're actually training. I play a lot of hockey. I do a lot of other things like runs. So my body's feeling good right now. So I'm staying with this. What's that mask? What's that mask? This thing sucks. I'm, I'm talking the entire time. It keeps falling down on my face. It's ridiculous. What the fuck, man? It's like you have a create a good mask. Yep. Woo! Woo! Tone says. 
All right, so, yeah, I got it. So why the safety bar? Um, I do back squat a lot. I front squat a lot. And I like to do other squats, like Frankenstein squats, um, Zercher squats. The safety bar for most, I find, is a much, um, uh, you get a much more advantageous position because of the hand position. So for a lot of, especially a lot of guys out there who are lacking in shoulder mobility, to get their arms behind them requires a lot of mobility. So getting your hands into this position here, I find it much easier to be able to sit into. It's almost taking a goblet squat and just making it really heavy. All right, so watch. So typically right now, I'm in a pretty clean position. I can get my feet set, hands. So I'm always focusing on uh, on a fast concentric. Slow negative, fast positive on the way up. And right now, I'm gonna spend some time just getting loose. I'm not gonna kill myself with reps. I plan on going like a four by four today, so right now I'm just gonna just kind of feel it. Um, a lot of people will ask me, why do I do, like I, I train, I train legs with, with no shoes a lot of times, so I wear socks. I just like feeling the floor. Sometimes when I put a sneaker on, I feel like it's like me standing on sponges. It just feels a little too cushy and I can't get that connection. So when, when, when I'm not barefoot, but when I'm in socks or in a minimalistic shoe, I could really use the ground and feel the energy from the ground up, which allows me to connect with every area of my body from my knees to my hips while I'm going through that uh, range of motion of whatever it is I'm doing for lower body. I do believe in training and using different modalities. The safety squat, the zercher, the Frankenstein squat, the front squat, the back squat, the box squat. Um, bilaterally, these are all great movements, but they're not all for everyone. So I can tell you right now that 99% of my clients over the last decade, I have not had them back squat. I just, I, I personally don't see the benefit in getting them to back squat. They might sit, in a de uh, sit on a desk a lot. They might be lacking in specific mobility out of their upper body. So just because it's something I like to do, I may not have them do it. Kettlebell squatting, goblet squatting, one of the best, most underutilized tools um, for all people who squat. And once they start getting too heavy, whether you can't hold the weight here anymore, or you don't have access to weight, that's when that safety bar squat gets um, more beneficial. And I'm not, I'm not rushing right now. I'm not like every minute trying to do a set. Like I'm hitting fours, I'm trying to go somewhat heavy. I'm trying to still see how my body's feeling. So um, I'll take two to three minutes. After this though, Tone and I get moving.
I got you. One more. One more, one more. Stay, stay with me. God. So actually that was the heaviest I've ever gone on the safety squat. And um, I thought the first two reps were pretty solid. The third one might have felt a little shallow, but at the end of the day, listen, it is what it is. It's like I maintained a good position. It was heavy, man. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of weight for me. So uh, like I said, that movement's getting stronger and stronger, so I'm really happy about it. All right, so we're calling a little audible right now. So we just got through a good hamstring exercise, got through a really heavy squat, one way heavier than I, than I anticipated, uh, but it felt good um, regardless that third rep. And um, we're gonna go to extension right now, kind of slow things down a little bit, get some blood in there, probably go over hit some sort of a press, and then definitely a unilateral movement. I'm big in unilateral movement, so we're gonna get into that also. I haven't even tried those cookies yet. They look good. Yeah. I'm a big cookie and ice cream guy though. Like I can, that's my thing. I can almost like, that would almost be a perfect, like if I do like a bunch of burgers, fries, and then go cookies and ice cream, that's, that's like a complete package. Yeah. That I think is like. That's what I did last night. I'm like, I'm Yeah. Could do that in about an hour, two hour span. I'm done. I don't feel like crap. And I'm, uh, I'm ready. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty perfect cheat right there. And I'm simple, like, I don't know, five guys, fries, cookies and ice cream. That's it right there. And I always eat real clean, so when I throw a meal in like that, if I just keep it to that one, like, one meal in the evening, I actually wake up the next day feeling a little fuller, the body's a little tighter. If I was to do a whole day of that, I feel like crap. Then like I'm sleeping, my sleep's off, I wake up the next day, just dragging ass. It's almost like a food hangover. That doesn't work for me, that I don't like. The reason why I'm doing legs Monday though is because I'm freshest from Sunday. So I don't want to throw it in later in the week. It's literally the most important body part. If you're trying to put size on, you're trying to get leaner, whatever it is. Lower body is the most important body, body part. It requires the most work out of your entire system. You burn the most fat calories, getting a hormonal response from it. When people look like lower body, especially when they're trying to get good ab development, good core development, it ain't good. Definitely gonna move to some unilateral work. I mean, it's the most overlooked area of training the lower body. It's like, there's one sport, I think, <laughs> I think, where you're on two feet the entire time, and that's rowing. You know, your feet are actually pinned the entire time. So I know from an athletic development standpoint, even from a safety standpoint, get your split squat strong, get your lunge strong. Focus on those unilateral movements. What it's gonna do to core strength, balance, hip integrity. It's phenomenal. But I see a lot of guys when they're in here, and in women, bilateral, 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 it's important, especially when you're trying to get under a certain amount of load, but don't neglect unilateral movements. <clears throat> Tone's running the rack right now, which means I'm running the rack.
Come on, man. Tone's running the rack, three plates. So he's dropping away three plates, failure, three plates, failure, three plates, failure. At this point now, he's just trying to run through it. Guess I'm doing that now. Tony and I are going to keep going up and I go, you go. So our goals are a little different than most. I mean, so my buddy Juan down there, he's an Olympia competitor. His job is to be one of the biggest, most ripped people on the planet. My job is to be able to you know, uh, withhold a certain amount of athletic performance, but also be cover ready. That's been my line, cover ready. Can we get on the cover of muscle and fitness? Can we be, can we, can we look that way? And can we still move a certain way? So, yeah, it takes us kind of wearing more than one hat. Um, you want to do this? What do you want to do? I'm going to do this. Yeah, let's just go back and forth. Let's go. I go. This is this is good. What? Yeah. You can go two legs if you want. We'll probably even out. Hey, what's the big deal? Stay here, come here. Yo, all I said is I You can get this. What do you want to do? You want to take this off with quarters on? Tone, whatever you want. Press your big quarters. Come on. We we know this. Tony's had Tony's had some almost life-changing injuries where you know Tony's a super strong guy, but his lower body we've been rehabbing over the last 16 years literally. The reason why we're coming to a leg press right now, I'm doing it horizontally. Stabilize is fine. I'm doing unilaterally. It requires me to have to really balance and stabilize with my hip. And uh, you're doing a lot less weight, but I'm getting a ton of blood in there. And functionally, my body just feels good from it. I feel like I'm kind of filing away the rough edges from all the bilateral work I've done so far. <laughs> you ready? I might actually need you here. Try and make yourself useful. Yeah, come on.
Walking lunge. My, my knees are like freaking out. I do a lot of sprinting, so I'm getting a lot of hamstring work in as well, which is one of the reasons why right now doing legs more than one day a week isn't for me. After a certain period of time, there's a cost of doing business. You know, like you're, when I'm sprinting, my low back may be an extension. Put a lot of strain on that quad, the hamstring, that glute stressing that hip, so more is not always better. It's a big problem with a lot of people with program design, is that they just think they can just add, add, add. It's the cost of doing business. You might feel great for a few weeks. After a while, you're like, why aren't I getting, why aren't I recovering? Why is this area of my body aching? I'm in this for the long haul. Alternating lunge. Want to go to the dumbbells? We're only doing three sets here. What do you say? Oh. Start doing some small jumps. This is like the icing on the cake right now. the most rewarding area of the body to train. Lost a lot. I like getting legs done early in the week. I feel like you can accomplish anything. So we just finished legs. As you can see, I'm wobbling a little bit. I mean, it was a, definitely an interesting workout today, starting with the leg curl, get those hips uh, loosened up. That safety bar squat was a lot heavier than I intended, but I definitely managed it for a solid two reps. That third rep was a little questionable. But um, afterwards, our thought process changed during, during the training session. It wasn't about that heaviness. It was about getting blood in that muscle, but it was also about maintaining a level of, of athleticism by throwing in a lot of that unilateral work. Um, taking that one-legged leg press to failure was something that I haven't done in ages. 
but I had tone there, it was safe. I felt it in the muscle, not in the joint. I was really happy with today's workout. What do you do now? Go in the back, stretch. <laughs> Go, you build up a lot of lactic acid and there's a lot of soreness and tightness going on in the body. We need the body to repair. So I definitely recommend going and doing some static stretching anywhere from about five to 10 minutes, all right guys? Until next time, and please fire your comments below because I'm developing this page to answer your questions and deliver content that you guys are looking for. Thanks.